Shalom. Welcome to Through the Eyes of an Elder discussion series. We're glad you could join us today. You know, there's probably not another more obscure character in the scriptures that prophets and teachers and evangelists have talked about over the last 2,000 years than the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. And it has been very elusive on many accounts over the decades and the centuries that have been talked about because they don't know what he's going to look like. They don't know what he's going to teach on. How's he going to persuade people to believe what he wants them to believe, that they receive the mark of the beast? There's all kinds of things that come to mind, but the mystery is over. He's here now. He's alive. And we're breaking this to you so that you can see and you can hear him directly and you can decide for yourself whether this man is the, the beast or not. Um, there, this video is designed to basically introduce you to the, who this man is so that you can begin to reflect within yourself about what you're going to do with your life and what direction you're going to go and what you're going to focus on as far as what your truth is and what you should believe in. Later on, we'll come with other videos where we will actually start to dissect what he teaches, and it's extensive. And I think you'll find it quite fascinating. But without any further pause, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up a short clip and you can hear in his own words and see him in himself what he proclaims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and when the word is fulfilled against them, we shall produce from the earth a beast to face them. He will speak to them for that mankind did not believe with assurance in our signs. And I am that beast. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad. Ala imma wal mahdiyina wa sallam taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammad. Okay. There he is. Um, I hope you're as shocked as I was when I first saw what this man had stated. I have since been studying a lot of his material and psychoanalyzing how he go about proving who he is. Pretty, pretty compulsive, pretty authoritative, I'll tell you. Um, and if this don't make you nervous, I don't know what will. But this should shock you to your core because we are now in a time when this man is now here. I've been in this phase for 43 years, and I've taught about this over many, many decades. And quite frankly, until recently, I wasn't even sure that I would even be alive to even see this guy. But all of a sudden, he showed up, and he made the statements that you've heard. So what we're going to do is we're going to go today into taking a look at a little bit more about the characteristics of this man and exactly what he's going to be doing. And then, like I said, we will come with some more videos in the coming weeks or so when we can break down some more of his teachings and address how he's going to persuade people uh, with his form of logic. And I think uh, if you stick with those videos and you watch them over a period of time, you're going to start to understand not only how he operates, but just how compelling this man really is. He's being taught by Satan directly. And so uh, this is a very daunting task that we're taking on. I certainly wasn't expecting this, but Yahweh had brought this across to my path for me to see this after I had ignored it several times. I've since done a search, try to find if anybody else has exposed what this guy is about, and I haven't found anybody, and it's kind of shocking. So I felt very compelled by the Spirit that this is something that we have to endeavor on. So I thought that before we would... Um, go into uh, our thoughts on this, you might be asking, well, who is this guy? You know, what does he stand for? So um, I'll read his own bio, which is very short. And what he, what it says is, the Qaim Abba al-Sadiq Abdullah Hashem appeared at the age of 32 after the death of King Abdullah of Hijaz in 2015. Raising the black banner that has written on it, allegiance is to Allah and claimed to be Abdullah in the will of Muhammad. 
fulfilling multiple prophecies from Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. The Ayul Bat be proclaim verily, the Ayul Bat have a banner, whoever goes ahead of it has a renegade, and whoever is late to it perish, and for whoever follows it has followed us. It is written on it, allegiance is to Allah. There is no other banner on earth matching this description other than the banner of the Kaim Abba al-Sadiq Abdullah Hashem. What you have been promised has arrived. These are his words, not my words. So uh, what are we to take out of this? What we're to take out of this, as far as I'm concerned initially here, and I'm, we'll get into more of this as the other videos come out, this, Friends, this is a time to get your affairs in order, because if this man truly is what he claims to be, and I don't have any doubts about it based on all the stuff that I've looked at, we can't straddle the fence anymore. I don't care whether you're in Judaism. I don't care whether you're in uh, Islam. I don't care whether you're a Buddha. I don't care if you're a Christian, um, Hindu, Sikh, whatever these other religions, they have all come out of Babylon. They all have Babylonian practices contained with inside those ideologies. You are now going to be put in a position where you're going to have to decide whether or not you're going to continue to practice those or not, because he's going to compel you to come under his banner. He has a method to bring all the religions together under one banner. This is very important that you understand this. And Yahshua, Jesus, is not going to tolerate anybody who claims his name, who still got one foot in the Babylonian system and another foot in his kingdom. That isn't going to work. Those days are now over. Listen to what I'm telling you. I know it's a bold statement, and it should scare the living daylights out of you, but it's now decision time. It's crunch time. You're going to have to make decisions because you only have so much time left before this man goes from dealing with you in a rational, uh, irrational, but in a rational, in his way of thinking, of giving you a leeway to take time to make a decision to where he becomes the full-fledged beast and wreaks havoc on the earth. So you don't have forever anymore. We always thought we had a long time. Not anymore. Um, so he's going to bring all the Babylonian religion systems together. And so that's what, what's going to happen. So at this point, um, I got my brother, Anthony, my good friend, Anthony, and uh, we decided to tackle this subject, brother. Yeah. And uh, not on our agenda. <laughs> This was not something we were planning on doing something else. And then this got thrown in and I can't think of anything more serious to deal with than this subject right here. Um, I, I'm, my head is still spinning with the stuff that I'm, I'm uncovering. But anyway, I want to give you the floor and, and you can speak to the people about what your opinion is about this whole thing from your. Well, praise Yahweh. Um, Really don't have a opinion, just certain um, analogies that um, after talking to you through the week and earlier about what's being revealed to you about this um, particular person. And what really stands out to me is out of all the um, prophecies about end time, um, prophecies, who's the beast, who is the anti-Messiah, uh, are we going to go through the tribulation, are you going to be raptured out, all the different discussions, and yet this is the first for me to see somebody that actually comes out and claims to be this particular entity. And everybody else is like, it's up for your own um, belief. You believe it or you don't believe what a person is telling you. But when it's coming from the person or the individual themselves, it only um, alerts a person to say, well, let me see, is it really him? Because... So many people don't really take the time to see it was Yeshua really the Messiah. They just go on 
based on what they're being told by everybody else, but never taking Yeshua's word himself. So for me, it's going to be very interesting just to see how this this thing unfolds, you know. So I'm I'm just an open door, ready to um, look into it and see how how um, we can persuade people to really, really, really consider whose voice are you really listening to. Yeah. Um, I'm so anxious to want to get into so many details about this because mm-hmm. I've been engrossed in this now for uh, two and a half weeks since I discovered it. And um, I just don't want to reveal too much right now. I think his statement in that video should make the hairs on your head stand up, mm-hmm. you know, that, oh, my goodness, you know. You know, Yahshua talked about that those days will come on you as a thief in the night yeah. or like an animal being caught in a trap or a snare. Yeah. You know, you're not suspecting it. You're going around about your life the way that you are and, and you think everything's basically OK, you know, but then all of a sudden this disrupts everything in your life. Yes. Your physical, your financial, your spiritual, your emotional, your mental, your relationships with people, everything is going to get turned upside down. Now, I do want to say one thing, and that is somebody said to me recently, he said, uh, well, John, um, yeah, this, this looks pretty bad, but how do you know that this is a guy? And I said, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to tell you definitely this is the guy. Right. But. I'm taking him at his word. Mm -hmm. I've been in this faith for 43 years. I've never heard anyone ever announce that a beast is going to be created to deal with the world. And I am that guy. Mm -hmm. That's bold. And you guys haven't heard anything yet. Um, We'll put in the link um, where this video comes from. I need to announce that. Yeah. We'll put a link and I, I got to give credit for him. It's his video. He owns it, but we're doing a critique here, right. you know, for, for, um, for the public and, um, not going to demeanor him or anything like that, you know, but, um, we'll take up issue with doctrines and things that he cites in, in the coming videos, but this is going to upheaval everybody's life in every way th- you think you can think of. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe that, okay, so getting back to the, the question was, how do you know this is the real guy? Well, sure. Could he be a megalomaniac, a psycho, a narcissist, a false messiah that's making this claim, and then he falls by the wayside in the next year or two, mm-hmm. and then the real one comes a little later, you know? Sure, that that's possible. But think about it, people. Think about it. How many people have you ever seen that claims that they are the beast Mm. and that they're going to take out wrath on the earth is what he's basically saying, Mm. you know? So that kind of leads into, well, let's take a look at some of the the, the characteristics of what this man is. Because I can tell the public right now of all the videos that I've watched of this man, and everything that he said, and I've tried to assimilate, he checks off all my marks for what qualifies of what the scripture says for who this man is going to be. Mm-hmm. And so in my mind, he checks it all off. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that's left out at this point. Mm-hmm. Everything makes perfect sense. But could he not be the guy and another one comes? Sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I think we need to take him at his word. Yes. Because you know what? Think about it. Let's say it's not him. Mm -hmm. Still, what he's saying should scare the living daylights out of you spiritually, Mm -hmm. where you got to get your house in order. Because if what he's saying is true and he's not the one, you can bet your bottom that when the real one comes along, you better be prepared for what, how this guy's going to operate because he's revealing to us how he's operating. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it was poignant that we pull up some scriptures in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. We're not going to belabor too much today, mm-hmm. but I just want to bring out some scriptures that talks about him and how he comes and kind of who he is. There are other scriptures we're not going to get into. That. That'll be for a later time. 
So in Second Th Thessalonians chapter two, verse one through fifteen, it says. And I want you to pay the public to pay attention to this. It says, now, brethren, concerning the coming and the word coming in the Greek is very interesting because it means to punish Jerusalem with his presence. Mm. Now, why would Yahshua come to Jerusalem to punish Jerusalem? Well, for that, you need to go to the Revelation series that I produced in 2019, where it talks about how Jerusalem is Babylon the Great and the great whore is there, okay? And this man, by the way, has said, just to put a little teaser out there, he's going to rule in Jerusalem and the Jews are going to have to worship him. Mm. That's all I'm giving you. Later, we'll, we'll give you more stuff. Yes. So he, he, believe me when I tell you, this man is making some bold statements. I really, I want to stop right here real quick. I want to implore the public who's watching this video right now, please go to his website, pull up all the videos you can and study them inside and out and prove or disprove anything he says. Because like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he says some things that are very true, mm -hmm. but he has a very subtle way of twisting it in just a way that it can become very believable in the opposite direction. Remember, he's an anti-Messiah, because he's promoting the exact opposite of what Yahshua Jesus has already said and is going to do when he comes to sit on his throne in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So Jerusalem is the battleground, okay? So let's move on. To punish Jerusalem with this presence of our master, Yahshua Messiah, and our gathering together as a complete collection to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken and toppled to the point of destruction in mind or troubled or frightened to the point of wailing, either by spirit or by word, through preaching or doctrine or by letter, as if it was from us, as though the day of Messiah had already come. Because some people were concerned that they were being told that, oh, no, you missed the boat. It already happened. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to settle them down. So he goes on to say, let no one deceive through seduction and its completeness of you by any means through their style of communication. I can tell you this guy has a very specific style of communication mm -hmm. for that day will not come unless and before the falling away, which is a defection from the truth comes first and the man of sin of illegality who is in violation of law is revealed by taking off the cover and disclosing the son of perdition, the one who is destined to physical, spiritual, and eternal ruin or loss, who opposes and is repugnant to and exalts above measure of himself. And in the coming videos we will do, we will point that out if you don't discover it yourself when you go look at his videos. Mm -hmm. Above measure of himself, above all that is called as boasting in or speaking of Yahweh, or that is worshipped by giving devotion to him, so that he sits as Yahweh through entrance into the temple to dwell as a sacred place of Yahweh, showing to show off as an exhibit of himself that he is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And he has made statements to that effect in some of his videos. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining as to hold down that he may be revealed in his own time and in due season. That is now. Mm -hmm. I believe it is now. For the mystery that of silence that is sealed for those not initiated into religious rites of lawlessness. So in other words, if you don't know and understand what lawlessness is, you're of the Babylonian religious system. Mm -hmm. Because the Babylonian religious system and all those religions is all about lawlessness in a certain vein. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is something that you have to come, you have to be initiated to, to really understand the gravity of it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so now everybody's going to be put on the spot where they're going to have to come to these realizations. Mm -hmm. They can't straddle the fence anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just pray, Anthony, that, you know, 
people take this serious, man, and really start looking at their life and humble themselves, you know, that Yahweh can look down from heaven and forgive them of their sins. I don't care how religious you are. Right. None of us are perfect. I ain't perfect. You ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. But, you know, every day we have to judge ourselves and bring ourselves into conformity. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that the point of this video will compel people not only to learn about this man, but use it as a, as, a, as a means and a force to drive you in that direction to come out of the Babylon. Because, you know, in Revelation says, come out of her, my people. Mm -hmm. Come out of Babylon, lest you share in her plagues. So the point of us making this is to try to help people where they don't have to go through that. Yes. Anyway, let's move on. And comes into being and is taken from among them and is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, a Gentile not subject to Jewish law, will be revealed, whom Yahweh will consume and take away violently with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming to punish Jerusalem with this presence of the lawless one is according to the working of power of efficiency of Satan. And I can tell you, he's operating in a lot of power. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that will be addressed later. In all power, miraculous signs of ceremonies, lying wonders with omens. He fulfills those things. That's another check mark. And with all unrighteous deception and delusion among those who perish. And I just pray, Anthony, that this can have some effect on people, man, where they, don't, they, they did, just don't fall prey to this. Uh, to be destroyed fully because, and instead, they did not receive the love and affection of the truth of Torah, that they might be saved and delivered with protection. So having a love for the Torah, for the commandments, you know, mm -hmm. the, this, the revelation is clear. One of the identifying characteristics of the bride of Messiah who goes to the place of safety to be taken away from this man of sin is that she keeps the commandments. Mm -hmm. And... and it's been um, prophesied, even, you know, just using that word perish, that Yahweh's people are perishing, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For a lack of knowledge, right. And as uh, Solomon says at the end of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. for this is the whole duty of mankind, yes. not the Jew, mm -hmm. of mankind. And mankind is rejecting it more and more. Yes. So the very thing that people need to understand is the thing that you're rejecting, the truth that you're rejecting is the very thing that you need to embrace. Right. And the fact that the, the masses have rejected this message so much mm -hmm. is the reason why he's here. Mm -hmm. He's here to collect his harvest mm -hmm. before Joshua can return and collect his harvest. Yes. And that's why he's here. That's why he's manifesting mm -hmm. that they might be saved and delivered with protection. And for this reason, Yahweh will send as to dispatch to them a strong delusion that causes them to stray from the orthodoxy of the commandments, we mm -hmm. could say, mm -hmm. commit themselves to believe and have faith in the lie. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he promotes is that you don't have to keep these commandments. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get more violent against that as time goes on, mm -hmm. especially towards those who are uh, the bride of the Messiah, mm -hmm. that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure approved and promoted in unrighteousness, mm -hmm. which is contrary to the commandments. Yes. If you're unrighteous, it's because you don't keep the commandments. Exactly. But we are bound to give thanks to Yahweh always for you, brethren, beloved of Yahweh, because Yahweh from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth of Torah. Yes. The truth, the Torah is the truth. Yes, it is. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the master of our master, Yahshua HaMashiach. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, stationary and unmovable, and hold to seize with strength or retain the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts or comments on this? Oh, yeah. Uh, like I said, um, you 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 made a statement that just on what you're presenting right now, it ought to scare people. But the reason it ought to scare you is for the fact that you've been laying aside the commandments for so many years and that the thought of this fear, this person 
coming on the scene and telling you what he's going to do to you if you don't obey him. It's like, who's been your teacher? Did, did, <laughs> goes back to that video. did you not <laughs> listen yeah. to Yeshua yeah. telling you that these mm -hmm. things going to come? And now Paul is writing to Thessalonica to the uh, believers there that didn't I already tell you these things ain't going to happen until he's been revealed. See, now that's interesting. I didn't really think about it. But what he's doing is he's laying down a systematic um, explanation that this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. This is going to happen. Mm -hmm. This is going to and then he's going to come. Mm -hmm. I already told you that. You forgot about it already? Because some people in Thessalonica were forgetting that, and they were being told, oh, no, no, he already came. And they forgot about that. So he's reiterating again the same thing he said, I had already told you about this before. Mm -hmm. and, and it should be revealing to us what spirit is in us. You know, that somebody can come and tell us, I mean, even him, even Satan himself tempted Yeshua and offered him all manner of things, the kingdoms of the earth, just to bow down and worship him. So what what in any person's mind would tell you that if you don't worship them, then I'm going to punish you? Yeshua say, I reward you. Yeah, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite. But I'm going to teach you how to worship me. Yeah. I'm going to teach you how to obey me. And I left those rules here on simply how to obey me. So if you know you haven't been keeping my commands, then you ought to be afraid. <laughs> because this destruction is going to come among you and you're going to be deceived. <laughs> with the lie. You know, Shaul, you, you kind of triggered something in my thought mm -hmm. about how Shaul, uh, the Apostle Paul, for those who don't know, um, not to be, let, here it is in verse 3, let no one deceive through seduction in its completeness of you by any means. Mm -hmm. So what comes to my mind in regards to this, this, uh, this Mahdi, he's an end time Mahdi, he's the last Mahdi. Um, I meet a lot of people that believe just about anything you sell them, mm -hmm. you know, and if there's any one lesson that people should get, I think, in this is to check it. Why you accept things so easily? Why are you a gullible person, in other words? Mm -hmm. Do you accept things just at face value without going and checking? And that's why I'm saying, please go to this man's website mm -hmm. and pull up his videos. He's got videos on just about every subject. And it's well put together, you know, but, you know, his reasoning is where the problem is. Um but like I said, we'll go into that another time. But the point is, is that use it as a test to sharpen your ability to be critical. Because we're literally now in a time where this great delusion is going out across the world, where they're, they're being compelled to believe the lie. Mm -hmm. Now, are you the kind of person that enjoys being lied to and accepting that lie? That's my question to the audience, because we're in that time now where you can't afford to allow yourself the permission to be lied to, to be deceived, to not have the skills to know how to correct or uh, examine what's being told to you, you know, trust but verify, at least trust but verify. Mm. Don't just accept it hook, line, and sinker because Messiah or Paul is telling us that this delusion is going around the world, around the world. Do you really think so highly of yourself that you can't be deceived? Mm -hmm. And so when you think you can't be deceived, that's actually a sign that you are a person that can be deceived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the devil tries to trick me all the time. And some of it sounds really, really good. 
It is persuasion. And I'm like, how did I go for that? Because I'm always on guard, yeah. you know? It is persuades it if that's what you're going by. But if you're not going by what what you have within you, which should be the truth. If you, Amen. If you don't Baruch have Hashem. that in you, exactly. yes, signs and wonders. You have no filter. Yes. You have no filter. And that's the problem with the Babylonian systems mm -hmm. of religion that encompass the whole world today. They have so many errors and erroneous concepts and doctrines built into them that it's contrary to the truth. Mm -hmm. So you can't see the truth if you're trying to filter it through an untruth. Mm -hmm. And and Paul, he just warns us, and he warns us in such a, I, I want to say a, a, man, a powerful way, that if you just don't listen to it, you won't understand it. But it's repeated so much, not a works, not a works, lest anyone should boast. Right. You gonna see the boasting, you know? Just this little clip, I can see the boasting. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I'm boasting on works and not faith and believing in somebody else. And if I believe he's already came, the Messiah I'm talking about, and warned me of his enemies that were to come, why am I going to be persuaded otherwise? Right. And that's a whole nother exploratory video in itself. Yes. But, you know, again, like I say, the Messiah gives us a concise explanation for who he is, what he is, what he came to do and what he's going to do when he returns. Mm -hmm. And. You have to think in terms of whatever the Messiah says, the anti-Messiah is going to be the opposite of that. Yes. So when you listen to somebody tell you something that is not what Yahshua Jesus has said, that person's an anti-Messiah. Yes. And so that should be a clue and a tip off to you that your alarm or your antenna should go up that you need to avoid this at all costs. And this guy is the epitome of this. Yes. Yes. As you go along and you expose and you present, the person is who they are. I think he's made this and set me here in this position to ask each and every person, examine who you are. Mm -hmm. Examine who you are. And this just take me back to another discussion we did, negative pressure to conform. Mm -hmm. If you got this pressure and it's not calling you to repentance, to believe in the Messiah, well, you should understand that it is negative pressure trying to take you away from the Messiah. Yes. And uh, do you have any other closing comments or anything you want to make? No, no, brother. I think um, we pretty much sit like, open, crack the lid on the job. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to overdo it in this particular video, but I just want to say that you brought about up uh, the concept of negative pressure to conform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's part of human nature to, when you're uh, experiencing that, to take it very negative. But what, what I want to implore the people out there to look at is to change your paradigm about that. Mm -hmm. Look at it as an opportunity and a challenge to yourself yes. to help you grow spiritually into a place that you've never been before because mm -hmm. you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. If this man really is who he claims to be, you're going to need it because mm -hmm. this is going to be a hell of a time to try to get through this. Mm -hmm. And your faith is going to be tried like it's never been before. I don't care if you are ill or you had financial devastation or family devastation. None of that is going to compare Mm -hmm. to the trial on your mind. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much anguish Yahshua was in mm -hmm. when he was being crucified. Imagine how much agony he was in when he was in the wilderness and the devil was at him every day. Mm -hmm. And he's not eating, he's, not, he's fasting, and yet he's being tormented by the devil every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This is agony at its greatest. Mm -hmm. And this is what the whole world is about to go through. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have to make a decision mm -hmm. about who I'm going to follow. Mm -hmm. So you better arm yourself with all this stuff that we're, we're presenting here today so that you can be equipped and be able to stand in the day that you need to stand where Yahshua can say, well done and good faithful servant, enter into the kingdom. Bro, uh, forgive me. One, yeah. one, one last thing. Yeah. Um, you sure it's the last thing? Yes. <laughs> uh, because go on. Go what on. you just said, it just <laughs> brought this to me. Um, it's. I want to make the statement now, but I want the hearers to... Hold on to it throughout this whole little journey you're about to take them through. This whole revealing you're about to expose to them. Um, and that word is fear, like Yeshua had commanded his disciples and followers. Don't fear the one who has power to kill the body and right, put it in the grave. Right, right, right. Fear the one that has the power when you in the grave. Mm hmm to get that body and do what he want to do with it. Right. So it's a lot of stuff, like you said, you can't get ahead that, but just off of this clip, the fear that the beast puts in front of the people is one that's going to save their life. So don't seek to save your life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Unless you lose it. Mm -hmm. So, Again, I just, from what I said from the beginning, it's a time to get your affairs in order. Yes. Um, look, the worst that can happen is you're prepared yeah. <laughs> when the real guy comes. Yes. But this is a shot across the bow of the ship of yes. everybody on this planet with what this guy is alluding to, what he's stating. And he has a method to appeal to the Jew, mm -hmm. to appeal to the Christian, to mm -hmm. appeal to the Catholic to appeal to the Sikh and the Hindu and the Buddhist and what other religion, secular humanism, atheist, it don't matter. He's got, he's like a Baskin Robbins. He's got 31 flavors. He got a flavor for every religion where he will be, in his mind now, he will be able to legally give you a plausible argument why he's the man that can pull all the religions together under one Babylonian mystery religious system. Mm. And the mystery is how... How do you take all the religions which are against each other doctrinally and philosophically about certain elements, you know? Mm -hmm. And how do you pull them all together to where they can all agree on the same concept? Mm. That's a mystery. Yes. Only Satan could pull that off. Mm -hmm. This man claims he can do it yeah. and he's going to do it. Yeah. So I say, take him at his word. And get started with studying what this guy is talking about. Find the holes in his theory. Prove it scripture against what he uses to try to convince people. And we just asking, uh, friends, please take this very seriously. This is a this is a dead serious. This this is about your eternal life now. Mm -hmm. There is no more playing games. The time is up. The clock is up. The man is here. He's proclaiming it. Please do what you got to do. Get into prayer. Get into fasting. Get into study of the word. Prove out whatever it is you believe, whether it actually really squares with scripture or not, or whether you've just been writing certain things off, because now's the time to get real. And with that, we bid you shalom until the next time.